Hey everybody, welcome back to the Best Coin News Channel on YouTube. I'm Son of a Silver Stacker. Today's date is March 30th, 2024. I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. Hope you dig it. Now, um, let's just get busy with it, okay? I'm not even going to go to Money Metals. I'm not even going to go to the US, US Mint. I'm going to go here to the Google machine, and I'm going to put up here fiat money versus commodity money. And you know, I've been talking about this for a long time, and it's about time I actually did a video about this. So I used to think that we had fiat money here in the United States, right? Fiat money um, is backed by the government that issues it and the public's faith in the issuer that the value of fiat money is not intrinsic, but rather assigned by the government. For example, the dollar bills made from the same material, but their value differs depending on what the government decides they should be exchanged for, right? So there's notes, right? One dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, and they're all made out of paper, right? Hugely, um, you know, all the same, very similar. Now, Commodity money, isn't that interesting? What do, hmm, fiat money, commodity money. Well, let's let's see here what commodity money is. On the other hand, derives its value from the materials it's made from, such as gold or silver. And yeah, I think there could be more put there other than gold and silver. Commodity money can also be transformed into commodity that's useful in production or consumption. Examples of commodity money include gold coins, copper, and silver dollars. There was that's magic words right there, copper, folks. Yeah, that's right. So guess what is in our money? Yeah, we have copper and nickel in our money. Absolutely. Now, commodity metals, let's see, commodity metals are raw materials or primarily agricultural products that are bought and sold in bulk. Okay, we're talking commodities. Some common metallic commodities include steel, copper, aluminum, gold, and silver. There's copper again, and it's lumped in with gold. Does that mean that copper is a precious metal? Probably not, but what they do call it, right, is a strategic metal, right? What are strategic metal resources? Well, those are copper, nickel, cobalt, uh, cobalt and platinum groups. And I think that's like os um, palladium, os osmium, or something like that, rudentum, you know, those ones, platinum groups, all right? Way too expensive for this guy. So those are strategic metals, and you're looking at copper, you're looking at nickel, and those are the two things in our money currently that we have circulating all around us. Yeah. So what happens when, well, let's just keep on keeping on. I'm going to stipulate that question here. So this is the intrinsic value definition, okay? All right. Intrinsic value is a philosophical, con philosophical concept. I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to go here to the blue thing here. A measure of what an asset is worth that is arrived by, at, by means of an objective calculation or complex financial model, rather than using the currently trading market price of that asset. Really, what is it worth in a fundamental basic, you know, what is it used for, right? It's not necessarily um, an overvalued asset, right? Or it's currently trading at a high price. It's the intrinsics. Um, in the context of stock, intrinsic value is the true worth of a company, independent of other factors, okay? Independent of other factors. Let's, let's, let's talk about this for a second, all right? Intrinsic value. Do you think paper money has intrinsic value? Or do you think copper and nickel coins have intrinsic value? Well, that's a no-brainer, right? Because look at this. We're over here to the eBay website right here. And I look up here. Zimbabwe, 100 trillion. Yeah, that's a lot of simoleons, right? Look at this one. $189 for 100 trillion banknote. Now, folks, what do you think? Um, now, that's worth $189. What do you think if Zimbabwe made 100, like, like, for example, if they made coins, right? And it was a one trillion dollar, uh, one trillion uh, banknotes, or not banknotes, one trillion, whatever Zimbabwe money's called, right? In coins, and they were made of copper and nickel. Yeah, you think they'd be selling it for one hundred eighty nine dollars? I don't think so. Not even close. All right. So let's go here. How many rolls in a box of pennies in the bank? And I'm going to show you value here. All right. And I'm not going to show you. This, this is this is pretty wild. All right. So I'm going to talk about the the, the Lincoln cent. And I'm specifically talking about the ones that are copper pre-82 and some made in 82, but mostly you can guarantee all ones prior to 82 were copper, unless they were the war cents or, you'd, hey, if you find a, a 74 aluminum, kudos to you. Um, all right, here we go. So, like I'm trying to tell you here, let's look at the real value of these pennies. And we're here at U.S. Coin Roll Calculator, all right? This is on coinapps.com, and this is a very awesome, handy website. All right, here I've got, that I showed you, how much is in a box, all right? How many number of rolls are in a box, and it's worth $25 face value for those pennies? Yeah, so here we are. I got 50 rolls, right? They're rolls of pre-1982 Lincoln cents. Those are 95% copper. Yeah, guess what? $25 face is actually worth $65.06. Yeah, 50, just say $65.05. Do you think that's more than 
$25 face. Yeah, that's $40 over face, folks. That's tremendous. And really, um, you know, at some point during the last uh, couple of years, um, here we go. This is a uh, the roll. Uh, this is the Jefferson Nichols. So nickel at five cents. There's 50 rolls in there, and it is a hundred dollars. But if we go here, we're right now currently standing at 106.45, and there's actually a really good reason why um, copper, okay, as you can see, is clearly way more valuable than the nickel, right? Well, here we go, and honestly, I don't know if it's going to be even for that long. All right, so here we go. Here we go. This is explaining why copper is a little bit more expensive than nickel right now, okay? China copper smelters move closer to possible 10% production cut. What do you think that's going to do if there's production cuts in copper? Yeah, that's Look at this. 15 hours ago. Yeah, this is hot off the charts. Copper price bulls bring back $10,000 forecasts. Yeah, that's incredible, folks. So what do you think is going to happen to this number here when copper goes gonzo again? Yeah, exactly. It's going to go gonzo. So uh, bullish sentiment for sure towards copper, especially as a green energy transaction uh, transition happens. But also, look, folks, geopolitically right now, yeah, look at look at Eastern Europe, look at the Middle East. I mean, yeah, there is a need for copper and nickel from those from those two strategic metals, right? It's not just um, part of the the green energy. Now, here we go over to the Google machine. I put here. Um, yeah, here we go. This is really wild when I came across this and I was like, this is way too many eggs in one basket. Because check this out. Indonesia mined nickel uh, production has jumped from under 800,000 tons in 2020. Look at that. To 2.03 million tons in 2023 when it accounted for 55% of the global output. Yowza. That is remarkable. And um, look at this. Nickel producers fear growing Indonesian uh, pricing power and so on and so forth. It just talks all about Indonesia and the pricing power that's going on there. But look at this. This is really interesting. This is the too many eggs in one basket. That 55%, that should be worrisome to all of us because we know that, well, Indonesia, where is it? Well, it's an island, right? In uh, the uh, Southeast Asia, okay, just right above uh, Australia. Yeah, wh what do you think is going to happen there if um, China makes a move and takes back, you know, or at least attempts to take back some of its uh, reclaimed land. Yeah, whoops, right? That's going to make this really, ex make nickel really expensive because Indonesia may or may not be able to move some of that nickel across the Asian theater, right? Yeah, that could be pretty wild. So there are a lot of things going on right now um, that make me think that I should be collecting as many coins, right? And not as much paper dollars as, well, would you want this to happen to the American dollar? I mean, I don't think it would, not to this extreme, but I mean, look, yeah, I think the writing's on the wall. And let's go to those plus ones. This is called money. No dollar is a bastard, and money in the pocket means peace in the house. Isn't that the truth? Now over here to 39's fine, 99.9 KOI and Courtney's radio. This is Pink Floyd. Money. It's a hit. People love it. Now, with that said, I want to thank y'all for hanging out this long. I want to appreciate, uh, tell you I appreciate all y'all. Um, thank you for your subscriptions uh, to the channel. We are at uh, about eight. Well, we're just, we're, we're less than 1,500 away. Oh my gosh, we're so close. And I am working with the Spring Tea people uh, to get this store worked out already before. Hopefully we can get this thing going fast. Oh man, I can't wait. Now with that said, thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you do like what you hear and see, sub the channel. It is free. And please consider becoming a member. All kinds of stuff. Stack around.